Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to run uh, VS Code using a dev container specifically for developing C++ applications. I'm showing it under Windows, but the same process should be usable under either macOS or Linux. So first you need two programs. You're going to need Docker Desktop, which you can download from docker.com. Uh, on the button here, when you select it, you can then pick which image you'd like. So I'm on a Windows for AMD 64, so I'd download that. And then the other thing I need is VS Code. And so I go to uh, code.visualstudios.com and then download the version I want. Again, I'm on Windows, and so I'm going to select downloading the Windows installer. Um, I'm on a AMD uh, version, so you can see here there's different versions for ARM and so forth you can download. So download the one that works best for you. Once you've got those installed, you're going to want a folder to work in. So I'm going to go here in my file browser. I'm going to put this under the documents folder for me. Um, put it wherever you like. I recommend putting it under sort of the default place for files. That way your operating system is happy to let other programs access it. If you put it somewhere strange, it may have problems accessing it later in v VS Code. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say I want a new folder. I get one off the screen there, and I'm going to name this, uh, for me, I'm going to just call this uh, CMPT130, which is the name of the class I'm thinking about. So I've now created this folder. This is where all of my files are going to go. We'll see some stuff pop up in here in a minute. Okay, so next I'm going to launch VS Code, uh, and I'm going to open that folder. So I'm going to go up to the File menu, and then say Open Folder. And I'm going to open that Compute130 folder that I just created here. Uh, under documents, there you go, documents, compute 130. I'll select that. Now there's nothing here, we don't see anything at all yet. Um, on the left hand side there's this panel here for the Explorer, there's nothing created yet. That's kind of expected at the moment. So the first thing I want to do is install a couple extensions. So on the left hand side I'm going to go to extensions, click on that, and then I'm going to want to install the C, C++ extension pack. Now I'll click on that. I've already installed it here, but you will have an install button over here you can click on, and it'll take a moment to install this extension pack. It's going to uh, kind of allow VS Code to do the right thing when it's handling C++ code. Next, I want to install another extension called Dev Containers, which I've also got installed. It'll come up here, so dev containers, and then I'll click on the install button, and it'll take a moment for that to install. All right, once that has finished installing, I want to now go and um, kind of set up the dev container and tell this that it's going to be a dev container. So this is kind of the magic part. So on the left-hand side in this, I'm going to click on new folder, and I'm going to name this folder period dev con container. Just to make sure I've got all this right here. Yeah, so I name it .dev container. The period tells it that it could be a hidden file under Mac OS or Linux, um, and it's sort of just sort of a, not part of your real project files that you're concerned about usually. It's just part of the system administration of that almost. Now I'll click on my file the folder. There's nothing in it, so I'm going to up here click on new file, and I'm going to type in the name of this. It has to be dev container .json. J S O N. This is a, a file, a particular file format that we can use. Now, I'm going to then copy and paste in to this file the following code. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. Yeah, so it comes up really clearly here. I'm going to hide this one on the left. So this is going to say I'm going to name this dev container C++. Again, each of these is in quotes. I've got the one comma here and no other commas. And then I specify what image I want to use. So this is going to be the Microsoft.com dev containers called CPP, and the version is 1 minus Debian minus 12. Anyway, you want to type all that in or copy and paste it from somewhere if you've got it, and then I'm going to save the file. So I've now done the hard part of this. So every time, this is all set up now for me, I don't need to do this again. What I'm going to need to worry about now is, well, what's this going to look like when I want to do some development? So the magic here is down in the very bottom left is this green button. It says open a remote window. If I click on it, 
it gives me a listing of a bunch of options up here. So every time I open up VS Code, if it's only showing me this kind of greater than, less than button, I'm going to want to go in here and I'm going to want to scroll down to, uh, I want to open, yeah, I've got my file open, our folder already open. I want to select this reopen in container. I can also type in, for example, reopen, and it'll give me just that list. So I'm going to reopen the current folder in a container. It's a dev container. Now on my machine, this is going to go pretty quick here. I click on show logs and it'll bring up the log, I hope, and it shows us here. Mine goes pretty quick because I've already run this once. The first time you run it though, expect it to take maybe a couple of minutes because it's going to build your dev container, download a bunch of stuff from the internet, and set it all up to work inside of Docker. All of that magic, we don't really care about what's going on, it's just going to work for us. The only noticeable difference here, and back to where I was, except now on the bottom left it says greater than, less than, dev container colon C++. So I'm actually now using that dev container. So let's just go through and, and show what we can do with it. I'm going to create a new folder. Let's imagine you're working on the first lab, lab1. And in here I'm going to create a new file. Let's call this one lab1.cpp. Uh, it's going to ask me if I want to reinstall this extension pack. Because I'm inside the dev container, I'm going to say yes, I want this. It'll let me have all of those sort of smart C++ features now inside this dev container, which is sort of a different environment, so it wants the extension pack again. I'll accept that, and it is already done. That's great. So now I'm going to write in my code, hash include io stream, and then I'm going to using namespace std, and it's going to here give me hello world um, because I've got um, Copilot installed and it's giving me all the code for me. So now I've got my standard hello world program. I'll save that file. And in the top right hand corner, I'm going to click here to debug this. I could click the drop down and say run, but let's just click the debug button here. It then wants me to select a debug configuration. It may say a build configuration. I'm going to pick the first one. Importantly, it's going to say this G++. That's what I want to look for. There's a couple different options here. Either one's probably fine. The second one is just saying it can pick a particular version of G++, which is the compiler that's found inside the dev container. So I'll take the first one, it then goes through and runs it, launches the debugger. Uh, I'm going to hide the debugger on the left here just so I get a bit more room on the right. And we can see this is, it's launched a terminal, and importantly we see here the hello world. All of this stuff at the end is just kind of uh, noise as the program ended. It wasn't something I put in there, that's something that just happens when you run it. But we can see that it actually worked and it gave me the output that I was expecting. If I wanted to, I could debug it, I can set a breakpoint. And if I go back up here and I say debug again, it's now going to actually connect with the debugger and allowing me to step through just like we normally would with a debugger. And then I should have, oh, I don't see it here, oh, there we go. The buttons I can say step over and so forth, and it'll run those one at a time. So that's very nice. It behaves just the way we want. Now nicely also, these files are all on your local computer. So here back in my file explorer with my Compute 130 window, I can see that I have a uh, lab1 folder that I created, and here is my lab1cpp file that I just created as well. This other file that's just called lab1, it's the ex executable file. That was what it compiled and then was able to run inside of the dev container. This won't run on Windows for me or macOS if you're on macOS. It has to be run inside the container, um, and that's not a problem for us. This file is just used when you're running it. The one we really care about is this lab.cpp, and that's the one that anyone's going to want to mark. Um, one last thing I'll show you here, I'm going to close my terminal, I'm going to hide the pane on the left. I'll get rid of all my terminals actually. If I wanted to explore the dev container, I'm now inside of it. If I go up here to the menu at the top and say terminal, new terminal, this is giving me a terminal inside of my dev container. So I'm in this workspace, Compute 130, I can do an ls to show me the files and so forth. This is what has been mounted inside of this dev container. This is a Linux environment. Even though I'm on Windows, the dev container is Linux, and so all Linux commands are going to be here. So I can do, for example, cd lab1, and then to view a file under Linux, you use the cat command. So I'm going to say cat space lab1.cpp. And these are all running the Linux commands that I'm used to. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching, and happy coding.